All right, so let me do this question. It's a describing a scenario. Uh, we have a person of some mass, and I guess it's saying constant speed, so it's no longer a spherical person in vacuum. It's a non-spherical person in non-vacuum. <laughs> so a person is falling at a constant speed. Okay, so and it's uh, describing some distance that the person falls. Um, so when the person has reached this position, they would have fallen a distance h. And uh, yeah, we have a mass of the person, some height um, at a constant speed. Yeah. So once they tell you that the falling happens at a constant speed, that should uh, um, be a kind of trigger for you that they are talking about the terminal velocity. And once you remember that this is related to terminal velocity, you should remember, oh, there's air resistance. And uh, if we were to draw the free body diagram of the person, then there would be gravity uh, pulling the person down and there will be a drag force that's exactly balancing our gravity so that the net force turns out to be zero, so that the acceleration is zero. So this drag force should be mg. All of that. So, um, so with all that, the question is asking how much energy is lost to a dissipative drag force, what we've been talking about, if uh, the person falls at a constant speed. That. So you have, I guess, two different ways of approaching this question. You could use the definition of work. So basically calculate the work done by drag, uh, which will lead to the energy lost due to drag. Um, so you could calculate a work done, um, the displacement, that product with the force. Great, that works. Now, looking at where in our textbook this question is, I think it might make a little more sense to, instead of using work being done, um, instead use conservation of energy. Now, you might be saying, but energy isn't conserved. Uh, how, how can you use conservation of energy? Um, I, I can use, uh, I guess, uh, the way I should describe it is, it's a conservation law modified. So you either know what quantity um, um, among things not being conserved, what quantity will still have a changed, or you have a way of uh, writing this down, basically a change of some quantity. Um, so here it would be the, the put the total energy in some snapshot minus the total energy some other snapshot. And you can say that this difference, instead of being zero, it's going to be some value. And here, this some value is what you are looking for here. Energy lost due to drag force. So I can still write down expressions for the total energies and um, how that uh, works out to give me the change of energy. So, and, and I still call this related to conservation law because um, this uh, taking the difference, it's uh, um, kind of done with the anticipation that if energy had been conserved, then this difference would have been zero. That's the kind of underlying anticipation. So I still would like to relate this to conservation law. And the rest of the steps are basically the same. So you identify the snapshots. You know, this is going to be my snapshot. You know, person falling at some speed of v naught at some height. That will be my uh, uh, snapshot one. And this will be my snapshot two where this person is still falling at speed of v naught because of falling at terminal velocity, uh, but will be some height lower. And let me just uh, make this my reference point for my y equals zero that makes some of my expression simple. So I can now just uh, write down my expression for the um, expression for the total energy. Total energy in snapshot two, that's going to be the kinetic energy one half mv naught squared, and um, no gravitational potential energy because of the reference I set. That will be my total energy snapshot two, 
minus total energy in snapshot one. They still have grab, uh, kinetic energy, one half mv naught square, and plus the gravitational potential energy, mgh. So that difference will give me the change of energy. And here the expressions are simplified beautifully. Um, the kinetic energy cancels out the kinetic energy, and I have minus mgh, which will give me delta e. And I have a sense that they are looking for positive answer because they already talk about the word lost. So if I put in a negative sign, that feels to me like a double negative. So let me just do an absolute value sign and just calculate the positive mgh. Um, so mass, 63 times 9.8 g times h, 18 meters. Um, and the divided this by a thousand for answering kilojoules instead of joules uh, so 11.1 .1 kilojoule let me try 11.1 and if it says it's wrong i'll try the negative number yeah let me try the negative number will it say it's wrong yeah i mean um it says uh, i think this wording is a hint that they are looking for um uh, unsigned answer an answer that doesn't have a you know meaningful sign positive or negative sign so so yeah um and you know i, I think a lot of you can actually do the questions like this intuitively you know read it think about it for a bit and realize oh what they want us to calculate this mgh so you might be looking at everything i did here and think that's a lot of extra work for no need um and you know which is right enough for easy questions um the steps i go through here it's really meant to be useful for more difficult questions uh think questions where there's a lot more things going on so it might not be clear exactly what the expression for the quantity that you want is um in those scenarios that's where these uh, uh broken down steps actually help because when you feel lost like what do i do from here uh, knowing exactly what general equation to set up every single time that will kind of guide your thinking.